And that's a blessing today. Amen. All right. So uh, t- this evening, uh, we're going to continue our study in the book of Revelation. So if you would with me, turn your Bibles over to Revelation chapter number 9. Revelation chapter number 9. So we continue our study here in the book of Revelation. And actually, am I on, brother? All right. All right. I don't want none of of that fiasco stuff from this morning. Uh, (laughs) uh, But all right, let's continue. So uh, last week, we looked at the first four trumpets of judgment. Uh, And we saw that the, the, the seven trumpets of judgment uh, come after the sixth seal as part of the seventh seal. Um, and really, some people look at, so it goes, we, we know that it goes the seven seals and then the seven trumpets. That's how the, the book of Revelation has it outlined for us. And some people believe that the seven seals are really an expansion of the seven uh, see, I'm sorry, the seven uh, trumpets are an expansion of the seventh seal, or maybe they go one after another. And there's some debate about that, but re- re- the reality is just it doesn't matter. The reality is, is that these things will come to pass. And so our, what we do as we study the Bible, we read it for what the Bible says. Uh, and we know that in the book of Revelation that there is some symbolism used, but we understand that the symbolism used is a, is, is a picture that we, act, that we can accurately define. So, so the Bible is given to us not for us to guess what it says, but rather it's clearly given to us for us to interpret the meaning. And so last week we looked at the first four trumpets. Now if you remember, as a way of recap, the first trumpet... Uh, The Bible says that there was hail with fire mingled with blood, and it took out many of the, oh, it says all of the grass was burned, uh, and a third of the trees was burned. And the second trumpet, this is a great mount, was cast into the sea, and a third of the sea became uh, as blood. One third of the animals died, and one third of all ships were destroyed. So what we saw in the first four trumpets uh, was that God is now doing away with the very thing that he first initiated to sustain life. And we talked about that last week, how in the beginning, God created everything and put life in it, created uh, the heavens, the earth, and everything in between to sustain life. Then he brought forth life. Now he was taking those away. So those were the first two trumpets. The third trumpet, we we saw a star far from heaven like a meteor, uh, and a third of the water uh, became bitter, um, and it caused the seas, the many men died. And the fourth trumpet, one third of the sun was smit- smitten, a third of the moon, and a third part of the stars. So there was a lot more darkness in the day. So overall, what we saw is, the, is really the, the, uh, the, the taking away of the earth. And for today, the, we'll continue the judgments of God, and we're going to look at the fifth and sixth trumpet. And the Bible really takes a shift here. We go from shifting uh, from things taken away from the earth, and now we're going to see the, really the wrath of God poured out toward unrepentant sinners. Uh, this, the Bible does not pull any punches on here. Uh, and so let's read here. Uh, my desire is to get through all chapter 9 tonight. So let's read here. We're going to read starting uh, in verse number 1, chapter number 9. The Bible says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So let's stop right there for a second. And so it says, The fifth angel sounded, and, you know, this is John talking, right? We saw that this is the thing that it was revealed to John, uh, the, the, the things that will be hereafter, the things that will come to pass one day. And so he said he saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him, the Bible says, and to him, was given the key of the bottomless pit. Well, who is him? Well, if you look at just the way the text reads, the English language, him is the star. Uh, and so what we, what we see here is that the star is a person. Well, who, who is a star? Well, let's keep reading. Verse number two. 
and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. In verse number 4, And it was commanded them that they should not herd the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, those who had been sealed, those, those who are, are saved, um, and so, but the question is, if we back up here a second, who is the him, who is the star that's falling out? Well, many people believe that it's, you know, some random angel, right? An angel from God. Uh, many believe that it is a fallen angel. But based on what we see from scripture, uh, and what I believe is that him is Satan himself. And why do we say that? Well, we see that the bottomless pit uh, we see that as a term described for where uh, demons are bound. And we know that Satan uh, is the enemy of God, but what, what we do know is that God uses the enemy, Satan, for his purposes as well. Even Satan himself has to answer to God and can only operate under the authority of God. We know that God doesn't tell Satan necessarily, he doesn't, uh, make him sin, right? Make him do all these bad things, but God uses him for these purposes. And so who's, who's, the, who's the locust, right? And the Bible says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And let's just continue reading. I'll, I'm going to read till the end of the passages, and then we'll go back and, and kind of digest it, okay? Verse number four. Uh, and it was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should torment, be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And, and here we see what these locusts are described as. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And it gets, it gets even more interesting, verse 8. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as, te as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of irons, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Verse 10, And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Who's that? Satan. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue, this is the, the name that, I, that I, I said to Miss Sherry, I'm probably going to badger, Abaddon. Uh, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. And, so, and the Bible says, One woe is past, and behold, there cometh two woes more hereafter. And so that, here's what we see, the, the fifth seal. Uh, and we're going to stop right here for now. Uh, but really, what, what was the point? That these creatures were going to come on the earth and torment men. And then we're going to see that not only would men be tormented, they're also going to be killed. Uh, let's keep reading. This, this is the sixth seal. And the sixth angel sounded, or I'm sorry, the sixth trumpet. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the six angels which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand. That's two hundred million. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, 
and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued a smoke, it issued, issued fire and smoke and brimstone. But these three was the third part, I'm sorry, by these three was the third part of men killed. So in the first part, we see the uh, men tormented and now killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and they had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of, nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. So what do we see here? Well, we see really in throughout chapter number 9, God's wrath and his judgment poured out upon unrepented men. And I've titled this message today, A Taste of Hell. A Taste of Hell. Let's pray and ask the Lord to be with us this evening. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your word and, and what you've given to us here. Uh, Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom uh, this evening. Uh, Lord, there's a lot of uh, text here. There's a lot to digest. Uh, Lord, I pray that you give me the ability to explain it properly and, and give our hearts uh, the ability to understand and to hear and to be changed and to be moved and transformed by it. Uh, and Father, I pray that your will be done this evening in our hearts and in our minds. Father, we love you and we need your help this evening. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, as I said, here we see God's judgment poured out upon men. Uh, and really, what the tribulation, the tribulation, uh, this period of time, the seven-year tribulation period, is the closest to what we see the earth be to an actual hell. And so we start off, we continue on with the fifth trumpet, and we see in this trumpet, we see the locust loosed. Right, and so let's look again at verse number one. Uh, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven unto the earth, and to him, to the star, was uh, was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now we talk, so we know that Satan himself is a fallen angel. Uh, we know that Satan answers to God. Uh, we see that in the book of Job. Even even God, even Satan presents himself to God, and it has to submit himself to him, and has no authority without without the uh, approval of God. But he is the prince in power of the air. Uh, Satan, you know, a lot of people have this wrong idea that he, you know, he he will be in, in eternity. He rules, and he's the king of hell, and he rules with a wrought iron. But no, what we see really is that Satan himself will also suffer. But until that time where they are with Satan and the demons, fallen angels, demons are fallen angels, uh, what we see in that time that Satan is loosed now for a season to torment the earth and to torment men. Uh, and we know that it's a spiritual battle. Uh, and really, really, this is a picture of, this is a physical picture of what Satan does to us every day. Uh, torments us, and, and, and the demons torment us. Uh, but really, now he is given more freedom to torment men and those who are in the bottomless pit as well. Uh, so, uh, but point is, is that God uses him for his purposes because God's wrath must be satisfied. God's wrath must be poured out upon sinners. Uh, I mean, we know that really there's two options. Either you uh, take the punishment for your sin yourself or you accept the forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Nobody can escape the wrath of God. And so really, God's wrath has to be satisfied. And as we see before, as we saw at the end of the chapter, if men are not going to repent, this is the fate that awaits them. And so let's, let's, let's keep reading here at verse number 1. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, right? Uh, you know, some, like I said, some people believe it's an angel. 
Um, but what we, what I believe from what we see in Scripture is that uh, it's, it's Satan himself. Verse 2, number says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke out of the pit. So what, what happened? Well, the, the key of the bottomless pit, what is this bottomless pit? Well, some people believe that it is literally the crust, the center of the earth, uh, where that where the bottomless pit is. Uh, but really, it doesn't matter. But what we see is the result that this bottomless pit was open, and a great smoke and furnace came out, and the earth became dark. And really, the reason I say this is a picture of what hell is, is because we know that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Um, and hell is the absence of God. And we know that the lake of fire is God's wrath poured out upon men. And, and so the earth itself became dark by the pit. And look what happened next. Look who came out of, of the pit. Uh, and the Bible says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Well, we know that locust is, is this kind of insect-like creature. But we know that they're not locusts the way that we think of locusts. Smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And so the other reason why this bottomless pit is where uh, demons are loose is we, we see in Scripture, uh, Luke chapter 8, uh, verse 30, the Bible says, And Jesus asked him, so let me back up a little bit. This is when Jesus was speaking to demons. Uh, and uh, look at here, uh, verse 30. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him, the man who was possessed with devils. Verse 31, And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Second Peter 2, 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, the demons, right, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into a chain of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Jude, uh, verse number 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the day of judgment, unto the judgment of the great day. So what we see from here is that it is the demons, the fallen angels themselves, coming out of the bottomless pit. And so uh, the, the Bible de describes them as locusts. So what we know about locusts is that locusts are, are, are plenteous, right? They're these insects who devour uh, green things. We see them in the book of Exodus as, 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 as God uh, plagued uh, the Egyptians. Uh, but these locusts, you know, they're many. They're plentiful. They, they, we see them in swarms. So what we see is that uh, these demons are a picture of, of, of them swarming the earth and going all around about it. And not only that, it says, as scorpions of the earth have power. And so scorpions are found all around the world. I mean, apart from the Antarctic, right, where they can't really live, they're found all around the world. And the, what's interesting is they're, they're much more, they're here in the U.S., but they're very prevalent uh, in the Middle East areas. And so they have sensitive hairs that act like radars to find their prey. And they are venomous. Uh, but most species actually cannot kill you. Uh, but they will cause a lot of pain. And it, that's a picture of what we see going on here uh, in chapter number 9. Uh, so what, uh, and look what it was said to them in uh, verse number 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. So not, not, no death for these men, but that they should be tormented. And really, hell, there was no escape from it. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. Right? Most, most species, I read online and did some research on this. I was watching 
uh, scorpion documentaries before uh, to prepare for this sermon. If you saw it out of context, what, what does this guy watch on TV? No, I was doing research for church, okay. Uh, but point is, I was, I was watching some, and there are uh, over 2,000 species of scorpions. And only a small fraction of them have venom enough to actually kill you. But when a scorpion stings you, it is still not a pleasant experience whatsoever. In many cases, uh, I mean, it's going to be painful, number one. Uh, it can cause many paralysis. And sometimes, uh, on very uh, sm small cases, and some death. And that's what, that's what we see here in verse number six. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And, and so we, we see that these aren't just regular locusts, right? And uh, Scripture further points that out. Let's keep reading verse number 5. Oh, I'm sorry, verse number 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses, listen to this, horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and on their faces as the faces of men. Right? What a picture that we're given here. And verse number 8. And they had hair as the hair of women. I'm picturing long hair, right? So what do we have here? We, we have the shapes of them are like horses prepared unto battle. On their heads were crowns of gold and faces of men and hair like women, right? Uh, I don't know. I can't picture this uh, very well, but, I mean, this is what the Bible says. Uh, and let me, put this, let me put this out there. I believe what the Bible says. Uh, if you believe that, some people may say, well, do you really believe that this is, this is going to happen or you're just like this? Well, what I believe is that the Bible is painting a very clear picture of what's going to happen. And if we believe that God created the heavens, the earth, everything in between, we believe, I believe in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter number 9. And so, uh, they had hair as the hair of women, and teeth as the teeth of lions, verse 9, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. So this is the picture that we're given. Uh, but, we, but what we see is that this just wasn't like a mindless, uh, you know, free-for-all. Look, look they, they had organization, verse number 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew was Abaddon, Satan himself, correct. And so the name Abaddon means destroyer. I'm sorry, destruction. And, and, and look, it says, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Apollyon it also means, it means destroyer. So w what do we see here is that we see is Satan is, is given the authority to, to uh, take his, his army, his, his demon army, and torment men. That is what Satan is given the authority to do. Uh, but, and we see that these five months, that men will literally have be tormented, and, and it will just be a horrible experience. But unfortunately, it doesn't end there. Look, at, there's more coming. If you remember uh, in chapter number 8, verse 13, let me read that over, and it says, I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of other voices of the trumpets of the three angels which are yet to sound. You're saying how there's worse coming, and that we see uh, the, the sixth trumpet coming up here in verse number 12. I'm sorry, 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns, of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, lose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. There's, we see these four angels here. The Bible says, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year. For what purpose? For to slay the third part of men. 
These are also believed to be fallen angels. Why? Because they are bound and they have to be loosed, right? Uh, and, and look, we have a number, verse number 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. So now we see uh, what I call this army of death. Before we saw the army of torment, now we see the army of death. And we'll keep reading here. And, and look, look at the description of these. And verse number 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lion. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. I mean... In heaven, we see, I mean, uh, let me back up a little bit. In heaven itself, we see pictures of, of, of the cherubims and what they look like. And what we see here is that these demons, uh, you know, we don't see them with two horns and they're all in red. And they got a little uh, big old toothpick or whatever, trident, whatever. They don't appear the way uh, uh, the, the television describes it. The picture that we have here, that as they appear to, to men here, is something unhuman, like un, unimaginable. So they had, they had uh, saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them said, breastplates of fire, of, and of jacinth. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, to be honest. But it's, it's, a precious, uh, it's a precious stone. And it says, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And it says, by these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouth. So all we see here that they're literally out to kill men. And verse 19 says, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Uh, and the rest, let, let me stop there and, and stop for a minute. So, like I said, these four angels were believed to be fallen angels. And they were very scary creatures, right? It seems like something out of a kid's nightmare, right? It's, it's like one of those things that a kid draws, and it's like, where did you... <laughs> Where did you see that? <laughs> it's like it's, it's, it's something unimaginable. And not only do they look like this, not only are they scary, right? Not only did we have these torment for, for five months, now they're men actually, one third of all men are actually going to get their wish. That is that they would be killed, right? And, and so if we, if we think about this, we, we think about the wrath of God poured out upon unrepentant men. And, and you might ask, you know, what, what's the point of all this? Well, you know, God could, in his very sovereignty, just skip to the end and skip to the lake of fire. Well, we know that God's not done. We know that there's much that God is, is planning to reveal to us, and that we know that God still is giving people an opportunity to turn to him. And so what it says here in verse, 20, or verse 18 and 19, or I'm sorry, I skipped to the wrong part here verse 20 and 21 and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues the bible says yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should worship that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk it says not, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So, what do we see as as uh, from from men in the tribulation? Well, we know that in life, uh, when times are easy, uh, it's a lot easier to be an upstanding citizen, right? You got food in your tummy, bills are taken care of. Man, it's a lot easier to live that way. Well, what we see from Revelation is that when push comes to shove, when life isn't going that great, when uh, the church is, is missing from the scene, we see the realness of men coming out. 
And the truth of the situation is, is that these men were truly sinful and truly wicked. And we're going to see the wickedness of them in the upcoming chapters, how wicked man is. We're going we're gonna to see that truly be revealed here. We just have a picture of how they are unwilling to repent. And so it, it comes to the, it, we see the reality that some people, it doesn't matter how many opportunities you give them. It doesn't matter uh, what proof you give them. I mean, it, they cannot deny that there is a living God who is pouring out their wrath upon them. They cannot deny that. But what do they do? They, they don't repent. They stick to their wicked ways. Well, what does that say? Is It proves that God is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But God is not going to force his hand on anybody. So anybody who, who comes to this fate ultimately chooses it of their own free will. Uh, you've heard it said that everybody wants to go to heaven. Uh, nobody wants to go to hell. I would definitely agree with that. Nobody wants to go to hell. Uh, but many men, heaven is where God is. And many men have been running from God their entire lives. So although they don't want the punishment of hell, they also, they, but they do want the blessings of heaven minus God. These men that we see, these people, we, we believe they're not just men, right? Men and women, right? Even women can be just as wicked as men. Um, but they will never repent regardless of the opportunities presented to them, regardless of what is revealed to them. And I don't say this for to be somber, because the reality is, is that we never know the hearts of men, and we never know the opportunities uh, that God will give us to uh, reach people who maybe we think that God had that they are just a castaway, that, that they have no hope. Uh, maybe we think that, but we I've we've heard testimony of God saving some people in some pretty miraculous ways. So I don't I don't I'm not I don't say this to kind of be somber. And to paint this picture that's, that some people have no hope. No, no, no. People have hope. And, and we ought to uh, use the opportunity given to us to reach them. But really, out of this passage, what I want us to take away and really remember, I got some uh, takeaway points here, is that without the sacrifice of Christ, this is what was awaiting us. Listen, we, we can look at people and judge them and think they're all wicked sinners, and they're, they're, they're good for nothing. But the reality is, is that we were just as wicked. The only difference is that we, we saw God, God gave, gave us an opportunity, and we decided to take it. it, it the heart of man is it, that repentant heart, turning away from sin unto Christ. Listen, our sin would be bound us to the same fate. But we know that Christ, that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But, but I want us to really have a picture of this and realize that without Christ, this was our fate. And really have a thankfulness and, and, and a, a, really an appreciation for the sacrifice of Christ because the reality of it is, is that he endured worse than this. I mean, we, when we talk about the wrath of God, Poured out all of the sin of the world, poured upon Christ, and it's uh, uh, experiencing separation from God. Man, I just I just got to think what Christ endured. If this is the picture, if this is a picture of you know what essentially torment in eternity would be, man, what Christ endured, man, and we would just, should just be ever more grateful for that, right? And and but the reality is is that. Uh, God, we had an opportunity, and we took it. That is the only difference. We can be just as wicked as other people. Our sin is just as wicked. So what we should do, right, uh, is, is, is not make excuses for sin, right? Jesus died for it. That doesn't mean that that's a license to sin, right? Grace is not a license to sin. Uh, but rather, we should live righteously and live unto God because we have been given so much. And, and God gave us the book of Revelation for us to learn and for us to glean and for us to understand these realities and have an appreciation for them so that we would know, but that we should live our lives accordingly.
So my, that is our, my exhortation to us uh, this evening. Uh, so we're going to close in prayer, um, and then you know, we have some business to do. Uh, but let's close in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the message. Uh, Lord, help us to reflect upon it. Help us to um, learn from it. And Lord, uh, I pray for wisdom and for guidance in the upcoming days uh, with what you have revealed to us. Father, I pray for Vacation Bible School. Uh, Lord, I pray that you guide us and you direct us and that you be with us, Father. Uh, Lord, we love you and we want to continue to serve you in all that we do. Father, forgive us our sin. Lord, we, we fall short. Lord, we, we uh, just... Uh, don't meet your standard, Father. Father, help us to be focused. Strengthen us. Be with us, uh, Lord. And we pray for Vacation Bible School. Lord, we want to reach these young people. Father, we love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.